let's get it going let's get it going it is another beautiful day good people hey i am here at the carnegie library now i'm in guthrie america this is where i grew up at but the carnegie library was one of those places when i was in school that we always came to as a uh, for a field trip but because i used to come here uh when i was in school i thought this is a great place to introduce this next video that you don't want to miss i have a great conversation with christy hufty who is a middle school teacher and we just talk about everything and i think it's worth you watching so watch this So, so glad to have you, uh, uh, you with me today. So let's just jump right into this and just kind of tell me what made you get into education? Uh, education found me okay. kind of by accident. I, <laughs> I, when I went to college, I was planning to be a lawyer working with the juvenile justice system and actually felt like God called me to ministry. And so I became a student ministry major. Did that, married the love of my life, and we've done student ministry together for 28 years now, but um, somewhere along the way in the midst of being missionaries and becoming a mom, uh, a woman named Carolyn Conklin, when my girls were really young, said, I'd love for you to do a, a long-term sub. I think you have some teaching ability. And I kind of thought she was crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I guess actually she wasn't because I fell in love with it and apparently did well enough that she said, I want to, I want you to go back to school and get certified and, and I'll, I'll help you pay for that. And now so, say the lady's name again. And what was her role? Like what? Carolyn Conklin. Uh -huh. She was the principal of my daughter's elementary okay, school. Okay. And she went to our church as well. So we had, we had had a long-term relationship with her and her husband and her kids were in our student ministry. And she just said, there's something, I, I see something. And I thought, kind of thought she was crazy, mm -hmm. but also, like, nobody in churches were hiring me at that point. Yeah. So, so I thought I'd give it a try and, and fell in love with it. Wow. So this yeah. all started, you getting the education started from a lady asking you to do some long-term subbing. Yeah. And I guess that was her way of letting you just test the waters. Yeah. Because she, I guess she already had in her mind, like, I think I see potential here. Yeah. And so, and then from there, you end up teaching. Yeah. And, and I went in one day and said... I do like this. You were right. And she said, I thought you would. And yeah. it just went from there. Do you remember what it was that you liked about it? I liked everything. I liked the lesson planning. I liked collaborating with other teachers. I liked at that stage, it was, um, it was first grade, mm -hmm. which is funny because I'm not a little kid person. I, my husband and I've always loved middle school, high school, college age. But I kind of fell in love with first graders and teaching them how to read. And that probably, because I'm a big reader, okay. that was probably the thing that really hooked me. Because I'm like, I can do for those kids what my parents did for me. Yeah. And get them to fall in love with reading and fall in love with books. And that was probably the hook. Yeah, That yeah, really, yeah. really caught me. <laughs> That's good. So you ended up, so you did the um, long-term sub, end up going back to school. Yeah. And... And then you came out of school and you were teaching which grade? Um, well, the program I was in, because I had a master's in Christian education at that point, um, it, it allowed me to teach. So I continued teaching first grade for the rest of that year. Mm -hmm. And it allowed me to teach while I went back and took the classes I needed to get my certification. So I stayed there and I was at that school for a few years, taught first, second, and a few months of third grade there. But then we moved up to Oklahoma. And then I continued in elementary for, well, I was in elementary for 13 years Okay. before I moved to middle school. Middle school. <laughs> Which for years and years, my husband had said, you should teach middle school. And I had friends that had made the jump that said, girl, this is where you fit. And I was like, but I love my elementary school. And I had just the most wonderful team of people I was working with. And then I had an incident and I said, I'm done with education. Uh -huh. And my husband said, maybe you're just done with children. Okay. Maybe you need to go. So I took the middle school test and passed it and um, applied at the middle school that my elementary school fed into because okay. I wanted those relationships to continue. Yeah, yeah. And um, the day after the interview, got a call from the principal offering me a job. And, 
and I started crying. <laughs> I was like, do you really want me? Because I want to be there. <laughs> and he probably thought I was crazy. And I said, I promise I don't cry all the time. Um, now, how long ago was this? That was almost, that was five years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> and true to my word, I didn't ever cry again. That's good. But now you, you have not cried at all or just cried with him? Well, not with him. I cry. I do cry. I mean, <laughs> I don't know a teacher, male or female, that at some point does not cry at this job. Well, so. the, one of my uh, questions when I, because I haven't always just sat down with the teachers. I was, I, I used to would just send the questions and one of my questions, I don't know if it's on this or not, but was like, when was the last time you cried? Because I just feel like all teachers have that moment. There's no way in the world that you oh, don't have no. a moment of just sitting at your desk when everybody's gone and like, what in the world? Yes. Um, uh, that's been in within the past week. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Like, so is it, is it more of a, what in the world or is it, yeah. What, what is it like? What is a typical uh, um, moment of I got to cry? It's usually it's usually related to I have this kid or these couple group, these couple kids that I'm just trying to reach and it's not happening. Mm. And not only is it not happening, but the, their behavior, other behaviors, other pressures that are coming. It's kind of a perfect storm of things. Mm -hmm. And you do, you sit at your desk or you sit in your car in the parking lot and there's tears to one degree or another. You know, it's not a full blown Niagara moment yes, every time, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but of just, it, it's just that why, why can't I see the, mm. the results I've been working so hard to see. Yeah. And I'm, I'm working really, really hard and like, am, am I working too hard? Yeah. Is this, can I keep doing this? Yeah. And so far the answer's always been yes. The worst moment was when I referred to the incident. Mm -hmm. um, the worst moment was the thing that precipitated my move to middle school was when I had a second grade kid bite me on the breast. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And I walked out of school that day weeping called my parents and I said, I'm done. This, I'm done. It, it's not worth it. And they listened and they're great about praying with me. Yeah. And my husband had come up to school when it happened and he listened and prayed with me and hugged so me. So did he come? Did, was it like, you need to get up here? Or how, I did, text, he, how did he? Oh, I up? texted him. I just said, I need you to pray for me. This just happened. And he was in downtown Oklahoma City and he was at the school in Edmond within about 20 minutes. Okay. And, um, so he wasn't coming to fight the kid though. No, no. He's so, <laughs> well, you know, Rodney, he's, <laughs> he's passionate, but it's a very understated, like yes. you have to look at his eyes yeah. to see it. <laughs> but he walked in and he didn't even come to my room first. He went to the principal and he goes, what are you doing to protect my wife? Uh -huh. And, and then he came and, and just held me and wish I needed. But the, yeah, there was a lot of crying yeah. for many days after that. <laughs> yeah. I, I can only imagine. And I've heard a few stories, but I don't think I've heard that story. So, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's not one I tell often, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you, 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 I'm glad you decided to share it here on the Hedy Coleman Show. <laughs> yes, right. Because I'm looking for more uh, subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you know, the cool thing, though, what I what I hear from you is like people have this thing to be able to see things in you, like the principal pointed you in that direction. Other people kind of yeah. said, you know, middle school may be your thing. Yeah. Uh, so has middle th school been your thing? Oh, my gosh. The best move ever. Mm -hmm. Just I didn't know. I didn't. I had a job I loved with people I adored and I didn't know it could get better. And it did. Mm -hmm. And so really thankful, um, you know, even at this point for the bite, because honestly, Hetty, God had told me three months previous to being bitten, this is your last year at Northern Hills Elementary. Mm -hmm. And one of my morning habits is I make a cup of coffee or tea and I kind of wander the halls and I pray. And there was a morning early in that year and just, this doesn't happen much in my life, but pretty very clearly heard the voice of God. This is your last year at Northern Hills. Mm. And I said, no, it's not. And I kept walking and praying, which is a little ironic. Yeah. Um, and then all of that happened. And as I look back, it was, it was one of those things that I 
God knew it was time for me to move into this different place Mm -hmm. and do this different thing that I would be happier. And if I just shut up and been obedient, it might have been a little easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it wouldn't have taken all that. Maybe not. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe not. Oh my goodness. So when when you say yes, middle school has been the thing for me. Like, what is it that makes you say that about love, middle school experience versus oh my elementary? Gosh. I love middle school kids. Not that I didn't love elementary, but I just have this extra. You have to have a certain kind of crazy to teach middle school. Okay. Um, and I have it. Yeah. And you you do have to have a little something, and the people you're with have to have a little something weird to make it work. And I've got it. And it just, I love that age group. They're ridiculous. They're emotional. Like, what are you... <laughs> They are smelly. They make no logical sense. I mean, like they, their poor little brains don't know what's going on. Yeah. And I love it. I love it because it's just fun yeah. and they're fun. And yeah. all of that nonsense doesn't bother me. Like, I, I mean, and I understand why that stuff bothers people. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. But <laughs> should you let it by like you, like hearing that from you is as though like, this is who they are. Mm-hmm. You know, like you trying to fight that oh. gets you nowhere because they're going to be these people anyway. The best thing is to do what with them? Is to just walk alongside them. Yeah. And instead of trying to pull them towards maturity, just walk with them. Because middle school is so, the success in middle school is so predicated on relationships. Mm-hmm. And if you try to force it, it doesn't happen. And if you enter into a relationship with a kid and they know that you care and you walk alongside them and you do life with them, they move from, from that l- lack of maturity into a little more maturity. And it's, they're certainly not fully mature at 14 yeah. when they leave us, but, but you can see that progress and you can see that growth. And, and I love that. It's yeah. real visible. Yeah. Yeah, I, I live with two middle school kids, so <laughs> yeah, it's been really, you know. <laughs> it's been really fabulous. Kind of just, I just think watching my children, and then just being in the community and watching other kids and watching them go through the, their different phases of life, and uh, as a parent or as a person who mentors and want to invest, trying to give the right suggestions. Like I love this thing of people being able to speak into you. Like I want that for myself to be able to speak into other people like yeah. that. Like I want to be able to see that. And, uh, because I do want to help send, um, the students and my children in yeah. the right direction. You know, they may not always listen. They might need to get bit, you know, you don't know what <laughs> needs to happen sometimes, <laughs> but you want to be able to like, when it does click for them, you want to be, I want them to be able to like, man, my dad told me that. Yeah. Like, I feel like, so my son, um, who is in seventh grade, I was like, you're doing student council. Mm. Right, so like you're getting in it regardless. You're like, "Well, I don't even know what it is, or whatever the case <laughs> may be, whatever." You know, and so, but now he's getting ready to run for president. Nice for eighth grade. You know, yeah. like, yeah, s- s- there was something that Daddy set you in the right direction. You know, yeah. uh, and so I want to be able to do that for other people too. So it's cool when yeah, I hear I think you do stories <laughs> like yours and. Uh, in in, in uh, somebody speaking in your life to do that. So, so we talked about um, teachers breaking down and crying, <laughs> and but some of what you said about that was that you want students to be able to get it. Like yeah. I walk out of that classroom, and if I know there's a student that's not getting it, that can be emotional. Like if you care, right? Yeah. If you care, that should be pretty. You know, I can see that happening. Um, how, how do you determine? Like, okay, this student just doesn't want to get it. Or this student, there's still something more that I can do as a teacher mm. to help them get it. Like, in there, there's those two things. Oh, yeah. Which that's the reason I respect teachers and I love doing the teacher podcast. You know, like, how in the world do y'all do this? Yeah. Well, you know, I think the key is that you never look at a kid, especially at this age, as a final product. Mm. You may not want it now, whether it's whether it's the academic part that I'm offering or just the life part that I, that's being offered because mm-hmm. middle school is so much about just developing them as a person. You're allowed to reject that. And, and there does come a point when I go, you don't want it. I respect it, but I'm going to tell you right now, I still care about you. That's still on the table. 
but more attention is going to be turned over here because I can be more effective with this person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that plays itself out in as many ways as there are students in my classroom. Because to one degree or another, kids are on that spectrum of wanting to learn, wanting to grow, wanting to become. Um, and it's just figuring out where they are and offering it and then allowing them to choose. Mm. And so I don't ever fully give up on kids. Mm -hmm. I do respect the fact that you get to make a choice. And if you've made the choice to push away, I'm going to respect that. Yeah. But I'm going to make sure you know I'm still here for you. And I'm thankful I'm in a building with so many people like that. That mm. just go, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. You're allowed to choose. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and at the end of the day, you know, I'm not superwoman, even though I'd like to be. Yeah. It's at the end of the day, it's not my job to change every kid. Yeah. It's sure. my job to be obedient to, to care for them and love them and teach them to the best of my ability. And it's God's job to do with it what he will do with it. Yeah. And, and, the, and part of that is them getting to choose. For sure. That's but it's good. hard. It's hard because, you know, you want that success. You want that academic success because we see down the road... I, if you don't figure some things out here, if you don't teach yourself how to think, if you don't get the skills, things become hard. Mm -hmm. And and the same with just developing them as a person. If you don't figure some things out, it does get harder. Yeah. It, but you choose. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a right to choose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we I, all do. We all do. Yeah. And I respect that. And So I, I would imagine that the teachers who who figure some of these things out, um, you still have kids in your classroom, students in your classroom. You have an A student and a C student. Mm -hmm. um, I think all students probably can fall somewhere in there. Like D and F is almost like you're not trying at all. How do you manage a classroom of 20 to 30 different types of learning styles? Uh, some <laughs> get it quicker than others. Like what in the world? What are some of the things that you do to to navigate through that? Because even in your home, like I can have a child mm -hmm. who can be a straight A student, then I can have a, a child who they're doing everything they can just to make a C in math. You know? Yeah. Well, so, and it, it goes back to the relationship with the kid, mm -hmm. and for the kids that are self motivated, just saying, "I see that you're motivated, and I see what you're doing." And I'm here to support you, but I also go, go fly. Yeah. Um, and that takes different forms because some of them want to do it alone and some of them want to help other kids. I'll, you can help this kid. And the kids that are struggling, I see where you are and I'm, I'm going to offer help in different ways. And, and it, I mean, there's no, I don't know how it happens. It just, it's developing those relationships with kids and figuring out what they need and then you keep all 30 plates spinning. <laughs> I, I, I have yet to really figure out how I get 30 plates spinning. I know I'm better at it than I was, you uh -huh. know, every year I can see myself getting better at it. Um, but it, it, it's exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting. I read someplace that teachers make more decisions in a day of teaching than a surgeon makes in the middle of surgery. I don't know if that's true. But I could I could understand why somebody might claim that. Yeah. Because because you multiply one person's needs and all that that entails by thirty. Plus you got to teach. Plus you got to manage. Plus you plus 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 plus. Plus you're human. Yeah. Like you got your own. Yeah, and sometimes you have to go to the bathroom because <laughs> I mean, like, at leaving thirty kids to go to the bathroom does not you can't let it happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just. You just can't let that happen. No. So, so let's say you're a teacher now, been a teacher for however many years now, it's 18, 19. Um, yeah. Um, you step away uh, with your 18 years of experience, 18, 19 years of experience, right? Let's say that you come back five years later and you're just looking at, you can see every classroom. You're looking at school and you can mm. see every classroom. When you look in there, what makes a teacher great? Like what, what are the great teachers doing? Um, the great teachers know their stuff and they're teaching it well. Mm. Um, probably because they've had a lot of practice at teaching it well. Yeah. Um, and, and that that just can't be underemphasized <sighs> enough is is knowing your stuff. Yeah. And knowing how to present it in a way that 
for lack of a better word, is appetizing. Here's a meal you get to choose to eat. I'm going to make it as delicious looking as I can. Mm-hmm. That idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and the other thing again, and I cycle back to this a lot, is is just the connections that you have with kids and the relationships, because you can be good at teaching from a from a scientific standpoint. Like I, I can dispense information well, but if I if kids don't care, if kids don't know that I care, it really affects how they learn yeah and it doesn't mean that i'm like super buddy buddy and mushy mushy or whatever or that i let things slide it just means that something in the room has an atmosphere has been created where kids know that they're safe and they're cared for and they're respected yeah and it those two things go hand in hand to be a really really good teacher and it takes a long time to figure out the balance of all of that yeah so yeah if i go back and if I will, I'm not leaving, but if I went back, I, I would, those are the things I would look for. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how you would be like, these are the great teachers. These are the yeah. ones that stand out. You got, you know, it's funny too. Like, I don't know if they do this now. They used to, I guess they still give you like the option of picking which teacher you want in middle school. I guess you don't do that as much, but it used to be in elementary. You used to be like, Hey, this is the teacher I want. Yeah. They don't anymore. Yeah. At least, at least where I teach. Yeah. <laughs> Which I understand. Yeah, no, I understand too because I think you go back to that whole thing of like everybody wants the great teacher, you know. But then what I also learned too is um, I may consider a teacher great, but I think it's because they connected with my child. Mm-hmm. And then another parent would be like, "No, they weren't great for my for my kid," you know. And yeah. and so uh, so yeah, so that's that's interesting. What, what's your superpower? Sarcasm. Sorry. <laughs> Middle school teacher, yeah, at the best. At the- <laughs> I I can come up with a snappy answer pretty fast. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, Sarka. I think that and gosh, I don't know. I'm not trying to budge you away from sarcasm. No, I'm not sure the, you are. Either. The next the next question would just be, how do you use sarcasm? Give me an give me an example of this is sarcasm at its best for me to help me do my job great. Uh you, like you want a specific example in my classroom? Yeah, it doesn't have to be a specific specific <laughs> example in the classroom, but I think sometimes because middle school kids are just starting to get sarcasm, they're starting to understand that double edge to it. It throws them off when you do it. But if you do it in a way that's got a just a little bit of a gentle touch and there's some humor so we can all laugh together and it doesn't yeah, become uh-huh. me laughing at you. Yeah. That's when it's effective with them because when we all laugh together, the, the tension, tension settles yeah, and yeah. it's all, you know, I'm, I'm not sarcastic in a, in a serious conversation or when a kid is behaving, to be honest, yes, yes. I'm sarcastic when you're misbehaving and it kind of gives you a chance to reset, I hope. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I'm going to be funny and I'll be self-deprecating in the midst of it, probably. <laughs> but uh, it will give them a chance to reset. And some of them, there's some respect that that engenders in a middle school kid. Mm-hmm. Because when you can come back with it, and then they go, ah, ah, uh, you got me there, yeah, Hefty. Yeah. And I do, I'm like, okay. And we move on. Because I'm not going to demean you for it, but but I got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on to you. I, I've got I get you. it. <laughs> yes. It's yes. not going to get past me. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good um what motivates you to like get up every morning because you talk about your morning routine of having some coffee and walking the halls mm-hmm. is that something that helps motivate you uh or what motivates you as a teacher uh probably honest that gets me ready for the day because if I, I need to putter and walk and pray and think before I can really engage with anybody on anything. Um, think what motivates me is at the end of the day mm. when I look back and I go this, I accomplished this, this thing happened. I had that moment. Mm. I had whatever that little success for the day is. Um, that's what motivates me. Mm. And, and I, and I think about it and I kind of chew on it in my, in my mind in a way. And the next morning, there's that fuel. Yeah. Cause I'm ready to go find that moment yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's if good. I ever don't find those moments, I'm in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you need those moments. Yeah. Maybe those are the days when I start to cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. That's good. That's good. Uh, what would be, so right now we may have a college student or high school student, right? Um, no, let's say a college student about to graduate. They're going to be teachers. What What's your tips for them? What would you share with them? And I feel like, uh, let me say this, though. I feel like this conversation has been full of tips. Oh, cool. You know, like, I think you've been sharing a lot of great things that I would hope. But, like, you're intentionally sitting down and sharing with some tips with uh, a room of 175,000 <laughs> Is that all? Yeah, that's it. Uh, new t- uh, students about to become teachers. What are you telling them? I would say find people that that are effective teachers in your building and watch them. Hmm. And ask them why they're why they feel like they're effective, and ask the people around them what they do that makes them effective. Mm-hmm. And then be very um, self evaluative. It's such a grown up word um, about your own practices. And because one of the things that really helped me was every year in my lesson plans, especially when I was teaching the same grade year to year, I would make notes in my lessons plan. This is what I did well. This is what I did wrong. This is what I need to change in order to teach that better. Mm-hmm. And I keep those over the years and then I look back and so I'll, I'll have little notes. And I work with these two amazing women, Olivia and Denise, and we all do that. And we sit, when we plan together, we're like, last year this didn't work. Mm-hmm. And here's how we needed to do, we talked about, we need to change this. And um, so definitely do it with yourself if you're fortunate like I am to be on a team of people that does it well together. If you can do those two things, you'll be a teacher like nobody else. Yeah. Because you learn from watching others, but you learn from evaluating yourself yeah. even more. Yeah, yeah. What, was that not good? Was it, I love uh, uh, Christie's uh, passion for uh, teaching middle school kids. I'm so excited about having teachers like her in our classroom. Hey, thank you for watching. On Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, Teacher Tuesday, I will uh, have the whole uh, conversation on my podcast, and you should check that out. You can go to HettyComan.com on Tuesday. Uh, at some time, it should be posted on there, and then you can find whichever blog page, whichever app, or whichever app you use. Just um, search Hetty Coleman, the Hetty Coleman Show, and it'll be in there. So, But again, thank you for watching uh, that conversation. Hope you get something out of that. I love to try to get people's stories out there because I believe that when we share our stories, we learn from them we are inspired and we connect which leads to community and as you know I believe that community wins and I want you to do something I always ask people to do go win